Ian, when you're ready. Okay. Paul, hi. Uh, are you well? Hi, Ian. Yeah, good, thanks. You? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Um, look, tell us about your squad for this weekend. I, I, I just wonder whether you have any positive news about players returning. Yeah, and Ender's hopefully back in training with us, so hopefully we can uh, build him up now as quick as we possibly can to get him available to play because obviously he's been out a few weeks now. So it'll be a case of building him up so he's ready to, to play and then play 90. Uh, he came back from the Republic of Ireland. Sorry, Eags. I say Ender then. Sorry, Eags. Yeah, and Ender's back in training as well. The Eags I was talking about then, yeah. Uh, Ender's, Ender came back from right. Republic of Ireland, but he should be fit to train. Fine, no problem. And Eags is coming back um, to be built up like I said, to be playing 90 minutes. How, how close to a return is, is Sander? Still Sander a couple Berger. of weeks away. Yeah, still a couple of weeks away. So he's been building up now. He's out on the grass. He's building up his speed. Um, once he's at top speed and, and the guys are happy with him, we'll be able to start integrating him back into training. So he's not even training with the squad yet. He's still doing his own personal rehab. But the last match um, against Chelsea in, in the FA Cup, um, I, I, I mean, I think most people's view was that it was a, a much better display, a much better performance, much more intensity. Um, has, has that set a bit of a standard, do you feel? Is, is that what you need to see now going forwards for these remaining nine matches in the Premier League? Yeah, we need to see that, definitely. That's, um, that's the focus, that, that's, that's the intention. We want to see that, we need to see that if we're going to start picking up results. So, yeah... He, we can't hide away from that. We know that. We know that's what we want. Uh, I think the players enjoyed the performance as well. I said afterwards and the players felt the same. that Initially, we're thinking of, we're out of the cup, you know, and we felt we deserved to still be in there, whether they're still fighting an extra time or to sneak the win. You know, we felt that we were more than capable of doing that on the day and, and that the performance warranted that. But we were out. So initially, we were totally disappointed with it. But looking back and looking at the positives from the game, yeah, it's a bit of a a marker, if you like, a line in the sand that this is us, this is what we need to do going forward between now and the end of the season. So that'll be reiterated over and over and over again and, and sort of every every performance between now and then benchmarked against okay. it. Three members of the backroom staff left this week, the first team coach, goalkeeping coach, analyst as well. D does that make your job just a little bit harder though? It means everyone's got to step up and do more. You know, it's a, it's a big opportunity for all the staff who are currently here. So, yeah, we've lots of departments have lost um, some key people who have been a big part of the club for a long, long time. So, yeah, it's a case of people stepping up and, and taking on more responsibility um, to keep driving forward, as I say. And people should enjoy doing that. You know, it's not just the players who are part of the success, it's the players that everyone sees, but there's there's an immense amount of time and energy put in by the staff um, in a football club. So, yeah, they, they should enjoy that and embrace that and take on the extra responsibility that, that it brings. Tell me, how, how, how do you feel about taking Sheffield United to Elland Road this weekend? You obviously had a, a time in charge at Leeds. Yeah, obviously people's going to talk about it. It's the first sort of, I know we had the, the cup last week, but first Premier League you've been preparing for and it's, it's a former club and whether you're playing or managing it's always nice you know from a personal point of view to be up against a former team for, for lots of different reasons sometimes it brings an extra edge sometimes it's the people you want to see again so it's always um, a different feeling playing against a former team but from our point of view if it was worth more points it'd be a more important game but it's not it's still worth three so our approach would be exactly the same we know it's a big game we know the good opponents, um, but as you first touched on before, we, we're looking to just build on that Chelsea performance and try and make that the standard and, and the, the minimum, if you like, for the last few games. Tell me, was your first match at Leeds against Sheffield United? It was, yeah, yeah, in the reverse fixture. That's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Strange how, how things work out. Were, were you frustrated that you didn't get more time? At Leeds, though. Yeah, of course I was. I'd be lying if I said I didn't, you know. But I, listen, we I still speak to, to the to the the ownership there. Um, no feeling, um, right club, wrong time, if you like, for, for myself. Um, and that's how you have to look at it. But 
lots of things I took from that were, were positive and, and I think they'd say the same about my time there as well, you know, if, if they're totally honest about it. So you, from the outside, as you say, you just see the bits on the pitch, you just see the, the bits in the media. Um, but as I said, there's lots of work always going on behind the scenes at a football club. A lot of it, um, a lot of the best work you do is, is behind the scenes that, that no one's able to see. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. Um, as I say, still speak with them, still keep in contact, and it'd be nice to catch up with one or two familiar faces at the weekend. I mean, you knew the job that needed to be done at Leeds. Um, Bielsa obviously came in. What, what do you make of, of what he's done and, and where Leeds are now? Yeah, done great. The, the biggest thing for me there, and I think I've said it a number of times, was there was a, there was a good energy about the place in terms of real good intention to be successful. Um, just giving that some real direction, uh, making the squad leaner, the playing squad leaner, the, the staff leaner. There was a lot of uh, people and, and things connected to the club that had gone through all the tough times that didn't have the right energy to take it forward. So the, the club did need a shake-up, um, without a doubt, and, and that's what it's been given. Um, but even then you still see how difficult it is it still takes a while to get there and, and luckily for Leeds they've managed to get there and, and they want to keep building on that now As far as you're concerned nine matches to go um, nine wins would give you 41 points uh, I wonder what you made of what the owner said during the week he's not given, he's not given up uh, hope of, of Sheffield United staying up and he said if you keep them up you'll get a, a 100 year contract yeah, nine wins. Yeah, yeah, you probably would. It'd probably be more than that. They want more than that. No, listen, it, it, it is what it is. Our, our focus is just on each game, each performance. Um, while ever it's possible, of course, we'll still fight. You know, the, the amount of work and energy that, 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 that the coaching staff, Chris and his team and, and the players put into one, get here, and then two, stay here is, is phenomenal. Everyone from the outside can see that. Um, and there's so many people determined that it, it's not going to be over. We know the task, we, we, we know the league, we're not silly about it and we know the realities of the situation we're in. But we have to keep fighting, not only for this season, but for next season as well, whatever that may bring. You know, It's a case of looking forward, as I say, it's, it's been a tough few weeks, but it's all about looking forward now and, and producing and building things that the club can then take forward with them for, to be successful next season. Paul, nice to speak with you. Listen, I wish you well. Good luck this weekend. Yes, Ian, thank you. Morning, morning, Paul. You all right? Yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, very well. Thank you. Very well. Uh, just if I may begin and, and round up further on the injuries. Um, Sharp and Basham, where are they at in their rehab? Yeah, still out. Obviously, Sharp is, was a quite a significant muscle injury, if you like. You know, so he's going to be a few weeks. We know that. Um, Bash was it was a strange one. It's more from contact, and and he, he was playing right up until before the game last weekend. Um, so he's still not managed to get him on the training ground yet, hopefully. We can clear that up in the next few days and, and have him available you know, in, in the not-too-distant future. But as it stands at the minute, um, he's not training. And presumably, the, the lads who played for the under-21s will come back OK and be available for selection? Yeah, we're hoping so. We're hoping so, obviously. You know, it's, it's a bit of a messy week. You think international break, chance to work with the players. You know, you, you always get that put to you, but you don't get them back until literally this morning. We've got some lads, four lads arrived back early hours this morning. So, so we'll have two of those in and, and two will probably still be missing today. So we'll have the full, full amount of bodies back tomorrow. Um, and hopefully everyone's fit and available. Yeah, who we've got fit and available, ready for the, for the game. Isn't it? We call it an international break, for, but for a large part of the squad, it's not a break at all. They've played two or three times at least. Yeah, or, or they're always active. They're always training. Yeah, yeah. So even if they're not getting the, the minutes on the pitch, they're away. They're away from families. And yeah, it's different. And it's different for every player, every international setup, every competition they're in, the fixtures they're in, the travel they're doing. So it's something that, you know, as, as a staff and the medical department in particular are always monitoring in terms of the load they've been, the, the minutes they've played, the load in the training load, the travel. Yeah, it's an international game and you have to pick up the pieces then as, as they come back and manage it the best you can, ready for 48 hours time when you have games. But that's the same for every club. It's it's a part and parcel of, of how it is now in the, in the Premier League and Championship, but especially the Premier League. 
I wonder how important you feel this international break has been for those that haven't travelled away and, and played for their countries, just as a kind of a, a reset. Good performance down at Chelsea, but just a chance to, you know, get away from it, I suppose, having had quite a lot thrown at them in the weeks leading up to said break. Yeah, I hope so. Hope so. Like I said, the boys, are, they've been, listen, they've been fantastic. We, we had to give them a couple of days off after the Chelsea game and then came back um, in the middle of the week and worked really hard and continued that at the beginning of this week. So, yeah, they've... They've had time away. They've had time to process everything that's gone on and then refocus, if you like. And as I said, it's about everyone looking forward and, and, and pushing and pushing for, for the club, for the fans, and also for them as individual players. You know, there's, there's still that uncertainty about the place. But in these moments, there are big opportunities for everyone. We mentioned the staff earlier stepping up, uh, but players as well, the big, big opportunities to impress the right people um, and, and really build on it on what opportunities present themselves. So these are a big few games coming up and a big few weeks between now and the end of the season. Yeah, because presumably, I mean, players are playing for their futures, whether that's to get in the spotlight, if they might be moving on, and some inevitably will, I suppose, or, or the players that want to be around next year. Yeah, definitely. And listen, that never changes week to week, month to month in any club. People, players in particular, because they're in the spotlight on the game, they're always there to impress but sometimes when there's a shake-up and a change internally in the club, it's even more so because that's just everyone. It's not just a contract situation. It's everyone playing to impress, to get a start, to impress the new manager. Um, and, and as I said, it should be seen as an opportunity, should be embraced, should enjoy it. And throughout your career as a player, you have numerous moments like this. You know, So um, you've got to try and seize them and make sure that it puts you in a, in a stronger position at the end of it. Just um, to, to drop on the coaching staff, yeah, three people have left this week. Are you expecting any other departures between now and the end of the season? Alan Nil's future has a question mark over it. Yeah, it's got a question mark over it. That's just between Nilly, Nilly and the club, you know. It's nothing to do with me. So um, that, that's between them and, and it should stay that way, you know. It, uh, there's nothing been played out in the press and that's because they don't want it played out in the press. So um, that'll continue to be to be that way regarding Nilly and his, and his future, but he's still here, still working with us. And um, until that changes, it'll, it'll just be like that. What did uh, changing tack and, and coming onto the match, what, what did you learn about yourself as a coach? You had that great success and a, and a great time in the champ with Barnsley, very different challenge at Leeds United. What, what did you learn about yourself during that period? In the Leeds period? Well, uh, I suppose the crossover and yes, the Leeds period. Yeah, the cross. Yeah, well, look, listen. It, from a personal point of view, it was really difficult—a difficult time for me leaving Barnsley. Um, but it had to be done on principle and things like that. And 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 I, I don't regret that. I don't regret anything. But maybe um, I weren't in the best position because whichever club would have come knocking at that point, I would have gone. You know that that's what was happening. Um, so I weren't really in the. Um, things you take from it weren't really in the best position then to go into a club. It's just a case of whoever it is, come on, let's get it done. Let's get it done without really preparing properly for it, doing as much due diligence, if you like. Um, I would have just gone regardless, just because of the way my mind was at that time. Um, but again, enjoyed it. And it's part and parcel of being in the game. As a player, manager, coach, you're going to move about. And what it did give me is another experience to work with some really good players, a real international group of players. Um, Another ownership, totally different ownership again. And, and each of those experiences you have, each club you go to, gives you those opportunities to learn and get better at these things. So that's how I see it. I don't look back at it with any regret whatsoever. Um, I enjoyed my time. I've enjoyed every every role I've been in so far in football. So and I'll continue Does to do that. Does it make you perhaps more analytical, I suppose, the next time you either want to or an opportunity arises to take the manager's job about that kind of football and due diligence? Yeah, well, it did. It, it certainly did. It did at Hibs. Uh, I took a long time to, to pick what I thought was the right club and the right people. Um, and, and I think I was proved right. It was the right club and it was the right people. But I didn't know four months later that they'd sell the club and I'd have another new owner and another new group of people to work with. So that, that's the uncertainty of the job. So, yeah, you can always you can sit on, the, sit on your backside, if you like, and wait as, as a manager and look for this perfect job, perfect club. 
you might think you found it and then you wake up one day and it's uh, it's totally different as I found up there. I, I literally found out the day before the club was been sold that um, you'd have new ownership and then it's an all different dynamic again. So, yeah, you, you, is there a perfect job? Don't know. You've just got to make the best of it and, and work damn hard to make sure that you're as successful as you can be and you push everyone around you because that's your role. So Leeds United, that is the challenge right now. How how do you stop them? Because if, if they're on it, it can seem like they're almost swarming the opposition. Yeah, they play that way. They, they play that way. Uh, but with that, we know how difficult it can be in terms of them creating opportunities. But with that, they give opportunities as well, as well if, if you're willing to, to capitalise on that. So we're, we're looking forward to it as, as a group of staff, as a group of players. We're looking forward to that style of football and that challenge that, that that'll bring because... We believe, exactly as you said, that it's going to be a tough game in terms of matching them um, and dealing with their attacking threats. But we also believe that we can create problems and chances at the other end as well. Um, and, and it's going to be one of them games, I think, from start to finish that, that's like that. You have to stand up, enjoy that fact, enjoy the, the man-to-man nature of the game, if you like, um, and look to come out on top. And, and that's every player. That's every player, whether you're a striker, whether you're a, a full-back, a centre-back. Enjoy those one-to-one moments, attacking and defending, and, and make sure that you come out on top at the end of it. And just on sort of psychological tricks and quirks of football, as you know very well, everybody in South Yorkshire likes playing Leeds. So it's not really a case of that the players won't be up for this one. Yeah, it's Yorkshire Derby, isn't it? Yorkshire Derby. As I said, we do we need any added spice for these games? I said these are... Ian was just speaking earlier about the, the amount of games that's left and winning every game and... We've just got to try and do that, you know, We've got to try and do that. So regardless of opposition, regardless who it is, that's got to be the approach um, and, and try and build, take some positivity into next season, wherever that may be. And, and that's certainly the message to players. That's certainly what the players want to do. And we just have to keep focusing on that um, approach. Every game, positive mindset, look for the three points and try and build some momentum, build some positivity. Uh, build a way of playing and some real structure to the players that that's going to reinforce all the positive things that they have done in the past because it's the same group of players that's been you know on a fantastic journey together and and there's no reason why they can't start doing that again brilliant best of luck on saturday thanks a lot cheers andy hi paul you okay yeah good thank you good to see you again um with the nine games you've got left, Paul, how important is it for this squad and this club just to get, even if it's two or three wins between now and the end of the season, just to get that winning mentality back? It's huge, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Winning mentality, performance, um, something to build on and look forward. That, that's what we're saying. You know, that, that won't change. That's got to happen. Um Regardless, like I say, everyone's in different situations. There's players playing for the futures here or elsewhere, playing, players playing for the futures here. Um, and it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Some players, it could be the last time in the Premier League. Some players will fight, be hoping that we stay there and win every game. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big few games that can help not only define sort of this season, you know, but how we start next season as well. And it's really important that, that we don't just waste them and, and let them fritter away. Everyone's got to be really focused on these last so many games and and really push to get the three points in every one. However many we get, we'll have to wait and see, but push for the three in every game. Obviously, the, the, the big game on Saturday at Leeds, it's going to be different, isn't it? Because, you know, in a normal circumstance, Leeds, Elland Road will be rocking with that kind of fixture, but with no fans... Does it take away a little bit of their advantage and give you a little bit of an advantage going there with no fans? Uh, I I think it's sad to... Certainly, like we've said that at at, at Bramall Lane, Sheffield United have suffered this season with no fans and and, and I believe that. But probably, as you said, every home club could say that without doubt. Um, But I just think everyone's suffering with no fans, even the managers on the sideline, the coaching staff, the sooner we can get back to fans in the ground, the better, obviously, safely and, and done in the right way. But I can't wait. And, and whatever role I'm in, I'm turning up at a game the first time there's a, a full stadium. I'm going without a doubt because, you know, it's, it's not football as we know it. It's not the same. Um, and the sooner we can get a packed Bramall Lane, the better. So, 
Yeah, who's who's the advantage to? I don't know. All I know is everyone's suffering for it. Even even the fans now watching at home in their armchairs, you know, it's just not the same, not the same atmosphere. Um, and and we need it back. We need the fans back. And in terms of you know the role you've been sort of thrust into, uh, obviously people talk about the players and the club and the turmoil. How are you enjoying it? You look like you're enjoying it. You look like you're you're enjoying being back in the the hot seat. And um, it's a real opportunity for you, isn't it? Yeah, I, I enjoy it. it. Probably the the interesting thing about this bit is, listen, football manager. Anybody will tell you who's who's done it. It's it's all consuming, you know. It's non-stop. It's twenty four seven. You don't switch off. But I think if you're a coach, you're like that anyway. No matter what group of players you're playing with, they're the last people you think about before you go to bed, and the first people you think about as soon as you wake up. That's just. I think if you're a coach, that's how your mind works. So that's no different. And and from my point of view, yeah, there, there's a lot more responsibilities it stands right now a lot more media for example people wanting your time all that type of thing but in this short space of time all my focus is really on the players that that, that I'm working with um, and that's the bit I enjoy the most anyway the players and the games so um, as it stands at the minute I'm going to enjoy it I'm going to work hard for the players they're going to get the best of me without a doubt and I'll expect the best of them so that's all we can do and I think if, if we all have that mentality for these last few games then we've got a better chance of trying to get as many three points as possible so that's it a few smiles on the face as everyone turning up every day fully committed fully committed to everything we do and we'll see where that takes us and in terms of the players morale people will talk about it um how have you found it and how difficult has it been when you first arrived to sort of pick that morale up and get that positive mentality going again within the squad yeah, well, we need. It's an ongoing message. We need to keep thinking that way. It's been a difficult se- season for everyone. Everyone involved. Um, I've obviously been out of the bubble, working in the academy. So, we, just through conversations, we picked up on it. You know, when you're sharing ideas, bouncing things about. But I've not been part of the group and, and felt it. But you, it's tough when you, the results have been going the way they are. You're getting battered from pillar to post. Everyone has the say on on everything, and it's not usually positive and you have to be strong and deal with that um, and, it, and it's ground everyone down but we have to forget about it now and we have to look forward and keep saying that so we've, it's been a culminating in what was a really tough couple of weeks the international break like I said we've tried to make the most of it we've had some players away but it'd just be good to get everyone back on the grass again together uh, and get the injured boys back as I say and and start having those options to change the team um, to, to pick it on energy, if you like, to pick it on morale, to pick it on um, who's performing, to pick it on results uh, and be able to change things about. At the minute, we're just stuck a little bit for numbers, but as they return, we'll be able to do all those things and, and hopefully inject a bit more energy into the last few performances. Brilliant, Paul. Best of luck for the weekend and the rest of the season as well. Thanks, Nas. Thank you. Thank you. I will put to the scribblers, will embargo everything from now until 